You want to bring another receiver in when we can't even get the ball to the receivers that we have. time i got to definitely admit to that it is morning it's eight eight o'clock in the morning right now um getting an early start gotta head east heading east this morning east texas gotta go visit my mom visit my mom and some more some more um family members so I had to get this video in here early this morning. So good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing on this Saturday morning? I hope everybody's doing great. Uh, big uh, shout out to the Texas Rangers. Uh, great parade on yesterday. We had a chance to witness our World Series champions uh, take to the streets on yesterday. So big uh, shout out to our 2023 world champion. Texas Rangers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So listen, let me get on into this. I got to give a big shout out to all the subscribers and all those that follow uh, this channel. We've actually picked up some more followers and some more subscribers. Oh uh, man, I was really impressed with one that I've saw that basically is a big time um, Dallas Cowboy uh, reporter. Um, so they have their own show. So evidently we're doing something right. So I have to say thank you to all those uh, that have subscribed and followed this channel. So thank you. <laughs> also, I uh, got to give a big shout out. We picked up some new followers as well. So we're growing, man. A uh, big thank thanks to the Dallas Cowboys on decks. Cowboys fan 365. We them boys. The 520 boys. Queen of honor by Cowboys fan club Mexico. Cowboys fan zone 24-7, Guadalajara, the hard hitters lifestyle. So these are all other groups out there, man, that are diehard Cowboy fans that are sharing and watching our content. So we want to give a big shout out to all these groups that's out there. Yeah, big thanks to Mikey, Mikey 520, man. He definitely shares all our content to these other uh, groups. So, man, we just want to say welcome. But um, we need to get right on into this, man. So uh, right now they're giving, you know, we know that we play the Philadelphia Eagles this t on tomorrow at 325 Central Time. So, um, yeah, this is a big stage. This is a very, very, very big stage. Um, again, you saw, you see the title, another big game, which Dak will we see? And we're going to talk about that because it's the big game is when we need Dak the most. You know, we talk about the Ram. Again, I said one in a, a previous post uh, uh, video that, you know, just like the Cardinals have our number, we have the Rams number. I mean, we've we we can beat them. So I'm not impressed. I mean, I'm, I'm just glad that we put up the numbers that we put up, but we even beat them the past few times that we played them. You know, just like we talk about the Cardinals. Oh, Cardinals shouldn't beat us, but sometimes when a team, you know, knows you and basically just got this confidence about themselves for beating you, and that's what they do. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, I was impressed with, with the Rams game, but at the same time, this is the game that we need to see the same consistency with Dak Prescott. So, with that being said, they are, it's been reported uh, by the Yard Barker, I guess. They're giving uh, a midseason report on the Philadelphia Eagles. So, uh, let's go through here. Um they're giving uh, their offense say, well, let me let me just read this. After winning last year's conference championship, Philadelphia remains the remains remains head of the class in the NFC East. Is every Eagle making 
the grade in 2023. So right now they're giving their offense an A+. Plus. Says Philadelphia, 387 yards per game is third best in the league. The team's 2,041 yards passing and 1,058 yards rushing are both, both, not both. Some people say both. I got both of them. <laughs> rushing are both top six mark. Quarterback Jalen Hurts passing yards are seventh most in the NFL. And DeAndre Swift, 571 yards are fourth most, most among running backs. So, and they go along talking about AJ Brown, and you know, you know, he is probably one of the best uh, receivers out there. Then we go on to the defense. Now they're giving the defense a B, uh, saying that the Eagles have a lot of few new faces on defense, including coordinator Sean Desai, 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 Desai. Maybe that's why they lost to the Zach Wilson Jets in Week Six and let Washington Sam Howell throw for 397 yards and four touchdowns in Week Eight. On the other hand, Philadelphia defense shut down Miami's potent passing game, holding the Dolphins to 17 points in Week 7. The Eagles won't flirt with the NFL sack record like they did last year, but overall, this year's squad isn't far off from their 2022 numbers. Okay. Uh, special teams, they give them a C. Um, then uh, coaching, they give them an A-, 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 saying Nick Serrani deserve a lot of credit for helping the team avoid a Super Bowl hangover with the exception of the Jets game. Philadelphia seem motivated to prepare each week. Offensive coordinator Brian Johnson needs to find a better run-pass balance. But overall, the coaching staff has done a great job. So, yeah, there you have it. Let me see my own right one. That's the one I'm on. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> Uh, that's your midseason report. And again, like I say, you, this is not a Philadelphia video, but in order to beat your opponent, you need to know something about your opponent. So with that being said, you know, as far as this offense and the numbers that they have put up, we definitely have to do our, our, our part uh, as a defensive, uh, defensive squad and limit their run game and their passing game. And how do we do that? Basically, we do that by putting pressure on Jalen Hurts and plug in the middle. That's how we're going to be able to do that. And the same thing as far as our offense versus their defense. We have to figure out ways where we can uh, overcome um, their defensive schemes up front and the secondary. Okay. So, no, this is not a Philadelphia video. But, again, you have to know your opponent in order to beat your opponent. Okay. So, yeah, with that being said, that's what we're uh, up against on tomorrow. Now, it's also been reported that Jerry Jones wants Cowboys to take inspiration from the Rain Rangers, Road Warriors. Here we go again. Jerry Jones talking again. Jerry Jones talking. Listen, I understand a lot of these uh, shows out there are connected with the Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys somewhere. Well, I'm not. I'm just a fan. And I can say this. I'm going to say this before those that can't say it, but I'm going to say this, Jerry's doing too much damn talking. <laughs> want to take inspiration. Jerry Jones wants Cowboys to take inspiration from Rangers, Road Warriors. No, really and truly, Jerry, they already have their own inspiration. But what we need for you to do is get the hell out the way. Just that simple. Get out the way, sign the checks, and stay up in the booth and watch the game. It, took, it, it was it was hard as hell to keep you from coming on the sideline back in the day. Every game you come out that booth and want to come to the sideline. So I don't know who got you to do that, but now we need to get you from talking so much. Jerry Jones wants Cowboys to take inspiration from Rangers Road Warriors. Well, if we do the right thing and we got the right coaching staff in place, it shouldn't be a problem. Because Bruce Bochy. He's a proven veteran. How many coaches we done went through that basically hadn't been proven? Oh, my gosh. I can count on both fingers, on both hands. Yeah. So, no, Jerry, take a page out of Chris Young's book and apply it to your notes. That's what you can do. But anyway, I got a few notes that I want to kind of go over real quick. And I'm going to go on 
So just an evaluation of our team. So uh, basically, I went back and looked at the Rams um, versus the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, one thing I did notice is, for whatever reason, Rams kept trying to use a five-man front. Five-man front bringing pressure on Dak. And basically, that was reading right into Dak's lap. And it fell right into Dak's lap because... One thing about Dak, in a man-to-man -man situation, Dak will pick you apart. If you did, if you are trying to run a man-to-man, -a, -man, a man to man uh, defense against against the Dallas Cowboys, you're in trouble because that's that that's where Dak that's where Dak is his best. That is where he's at his best when he's he's doing man-to-man. -man. Now. And I, I say that because after looking at the film, that's exactly what he did. That's exactly what he did. You know, they kept trying to bring pressure up front, you know, and uh, the offensive line did great. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We can say how old Zach Martin is and, you know, how beat up he is. I'm going to tell you something. They gave up that one sack with uh, Aaron Donald. But watching that film, Zach handled his business against Aaron Donald. Yeah, we gave up the sacks a few games, a few uh, series, few few series. But after that, Zach Martin held his own. Now, also with that, I, I noticed, um, you know, um, again, when I say that this five man front and Dak was pulling them, you know, picking them apart, which he was. I don't see Philadelphia doing the same thing. And I say that because I go back to the Tampa Bay game. Tampa Bay wanted to run man to man, and Zach, Dak Pat pick, picked them apart. So, if Philadelphia is smart, they're not going. They're going to probably run a four man front. They're going to probably do the same thing that the 49ers did: a single high man up and and challenge that. But if they don't, if they don't have the personnel, it's going to be a long day for Philadelphia. So I see Philadelphia doing more of a zone attack, making making Dak throwing tight windows. Now just listen to what I'm telling you now. I mean, this is, again, in order to beat your opponent, you have to ask yourself, how could I beat myself? What is it that, and I even I did this when, when I was doing peewee football. It's, if I know I run this offense, what defense could beat this offense? Then I put this defense together, and then now I have to come up with a game plan to be able to beat this type of defensive scheme. So, again, Hopefully, Mike McCarthy is looking. Hey, it's a possibility that Philadelphia might run a zone, four-man front, you know, you know, something like that. Three linebackers, two safeties, you know, and probably see what Dak does. But I'd be surprised if they come with the same uh, scheme that the Rams came uh, came with on us uh, on last week. So that's something to see. Uh, also, I want to say, Tony Pollard. Watching Tony Pollard pick up blitzes is scary. Tony Pollard is picking up blitzes by ducking his head. Tony, listen to me. You keep doing that, you won't be in you won't be in this league long at all. Okay. Uh, out of the running backs that I saw uh, on on the film, Rico Dowdle is probably the best uh, blocker out of the three running backs out there. Maybe. I don't know about Hunter Luke. We hadn't seen much of Hunter Luke, but Rico Dottle <clears throat> did a pretty good job holding his own, trying to pick up the blitzes. So, um, yeah, so we got to be careful with with Tony Pollard trying to pick up these blocks. And if he is, Pollard, you cannot keep ducking your head and trying to, you know, make pick up blitzes. You won't be in the league long doing that. Um one other thing, <clears throat> now, you know, Michael Gallup, you know, after looking at him in, in, in the last film, you know, he wasn't the main target, but he was a target when you needed him. And I feel that that's going to be the same thing we're going to see on Sunday. Michael Gallup might not be your main target, but he's going to be a target when you need him. You know, I think they're trying to figure this thing out as far as how to use Michael Gallup, you know, uh, Last week, we was able to spread the ball around amongst the three receivers, which was great. 
But again, let's not expect a lot from Michael Gallup. And if we do, it needs to be the 50-50 ball, back shoulder throws for for um, Michael Gallup. But again, I'm not saying that he's the prime. He's the prime receiver, but he is a needed receiver. So we're definitely going to need him on uh, tomorrow. Also, we don't know the availability on Tyron Smith. We don't know what's going to happen with Tyron Smith. Um, right now, time will tell. And right now, it's looking like uh, Adogo is Adogo. Adogo is maybe possibility ready somewhat. But let me say this: Awesome Richards. Once we put him in the game, Dak didn't get sacked anymore. So it may be time for Awesome Richards to hold down his front line. So that's something we need to keep keep um, keep a watch out for. See who starts at that 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 left tackle. So uh, some of the success that we, we we're looking for is we definitely got to have a run game. We got to have a run game against Philadelphia. We got to be able to move the chain, be able to move the ball with the run game. And that doesn't necessarily mean we have to run through the A-gap. We can run various ways, but we just have to be um, smart and creative with a little razzle-dazzle. Okay, a little razzle-dazzle, flea flicker. No, I ain't going to say flea flicker, but a little jet screen, a little double reverse halfback pass anything but it's important now listen guys and i told y'all before when we played the 49ers and i told you guys this i said you know instead of dallas studying the 49ers previous games before we played them i bet ten dollars to a bucket of boats that <laughs> they studied the last year's game that we played the 49ers. And that's why we were so flat because we saw something totally new that we didn't prepare for. Mike McCarthy, listen to me. Don't look at the last year tape of Philadelphia Cowboys game, please. This is not the same offensive coordinator. It's not the same defensive coordinator. So I need you to study the games before, the games last week, the game week before that to get ready for Philadelphia. Do not go back to last year's matchup. It's not the same team. Same players, but different coaching staff. Different theory, different philosophy, okay? You did it against the 49ers. Don't do it against the Philadelphia, with the Philadelphia, with Philadelphia Eagles, okay? So, yeah. That's where we are. I just want to report that, but we're definitely going to need a run game. We're definitely going to, this this defense definitely is going to have to eat. We're going to be a good in all three phases of the game. And again, like I say, another big game. Which Dak will we see? Hmm. This is when we need you most, Dak. So, okay, guys. With that being said, I'm not going to hold y'all any longer. I just want to make sure I got on here and, and re did a little reporting to you guys and uh, share my thoughts on this. Philadelphia Eagles game. So I'm saying my, my prediction is 30 to 21. 30 to 17. That's what I said. 30 to 17. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So with that all like with that being said, like I always say, don't nothing come to a sleeper but a dream. So let's make it happen. Dallas Cowboys.